Well, good morning. I wanted to make a video about the Prusa Mark III printer. Actually, I want to make it specifically about setting up for PETG uh, printing because PLA is the standard. When you buy your printer, you get a roll of PLA and all of the setup starts with PLA. Now, PETG is in many applications a superior filament. Um, I make trays and lids and uh, other things for engineering that really should be PETG. And guess what? So does Prusa. This is PETG. So how do you get set up for PETG? So let's uh, walk over here. We'll use printer number two and I'll show you what we do. First of all, you know that you, you generally start with a steel sheet and all of my experience has been with the smooth steel sheet. I really don't have any experience with the um, textured sheet, even though I have one and haven't started playing with it yet. So the first thing you do is you, uh, you pick a good filament. Now, I've been running this Overture PETG filament, which is an Amazon company, and I really like it. First of all, they come on uh, cardboard spools, so they can go into the cardboard recycling. Um, it's very consistent. It's very good quality, and it comes in a foil pouch, which means that uh, its, it's uh, moisture protection and shipping is excellent. Still yet another thing I do, and I made a video about this, is because I use the cardboard spools, I found that the cardboard, if it abrades uh, on the uh, spool support, it was, it was leaving dust and cardboard dust was coming out of it. So I made these uh, spool ends. You'll see one there and one there. These are two different pieces. I did a whole video on this, and this gives it a little bearing uh, and a much larger diameter, and these have successfully reduced or eliminated the dust I get from the cardboard. That's another win. Okay, so what do you do to get your bed prepped? So probably you don't have to do anything heroic as far as initial cleaning. However, if you aren't sure, you go down to your, your acetone, okay, and you do an acetone wipe uh, once. Acetone is not used every time. Uh, continued use of acetone will, in fact, uh, harm the the uh, plastic on top of the steel sheet. That plastic is uh, PEI, uh, which is polyether imid, uh, also known as Kapton. Uh, that material will be attacked by the acetone if it's used all the time. But I call acetone a reset. That will clean the surface from an unknown state to a known state. Okay, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's the use of acetone. Um, for normal cleaning or normal preparation, I use Windex. And I'm going to explain that in a second. For routine cleaning only, okay, we use isopropyl alcohol. So why these two things? Isopropyl alcohol is what you use to clean finger oils off of the plate and get it ready for PLA printing, not PETG for PLA printing. That gives you a clean sheet. That's what PLA wants. However, for PETG, we're going to use Windex. So we're going to start with a generally clean plate, okay? And we're also going to use Kim wipes. Kim wipes don't have any um, chemicals in them. They don't have any perfumes in them. It's uh, basically a lint-free cloth, and they're really not terribly expensive, and you'll see in a minute why standardizing on these wipes and this Windex is a good thing. Now, at the risk of sounding pedantic, you're going you're gonna to buy the original standard Windex. Uh, this one is a 23-ounce size. I guess they come in 16-ounce sizes, and it has the trigger. You put about three-quarters to one squirt, on the plate, you take your Kim wipe, you fold it in half, you plop it on there, and now 
you, you do a what I call a raster wipe on the plate and you're done. Now you see how it's wet? That's exactly what you want, okay? So now you would start your cycle and the amount of residue left by the Windex, yes, there's residue left by Windex, is exactly what you want as a release agent between the PETG and, and the PEI. And that is the perfect amount of release agent for PETG. If you use any, if you use too much, it has the risk of not sticking. If you use too little, it has the risk of damaging your plate. And by way of example, you can see I have some plate damage, okay? Because at one time, I overcleaned and the PETG stuck to this plate, okay? So that is the uh, cleaning and prep for printing. So once again, if you're unsure of your setup, you could do a wipe with acetone once. I have not used acetone on these plates in over a year. So that's sort of a reset. And then before each print, you do exactly what I showed you. Now you'll notice that I have three printers here. So do I go around, I could now use this wipe on this printer? No. When I get started and I'm doing a run, I will take a Kim wipe, I will set it over here for this printer, I'll take another Kim wipe, I'll set it over here for this printer, I'll get my Windex and I'll go pump, pump, pump. And then I'll put the Windex down and I'll do my raster wipe, put the uh, wet Kim wipe down. Raster wipe, put the wet, wet Kim wipe down, just like I did. Same thing. This way, it is very consistent. I have 99% success rate printing PETG this way, and I strongly recommend it. It works excellently. Uh, after you pop your prints off, you check the plate with your hand, okay? I like to flip the plate over. So after I do a, a, a print and I remove the print, I check it for any uh, nubbers that are left on there, and then I use the other side, okay? And that way, uh, the PEI on the plate gets squished down, squished back down. Sometimes it'll look like it kind of pops up a little bit. This one is uh, not showing too much of that, but you flip it over and it presses itself back flat um, during the next print. So I keep flipping it and I use both sides of the plate. When you set up for PETG, okay, you're gonna run the first layer calibration that is built into the Prusa. And you're gonna watch uh, the print. It makes this big zigzag. And you're gonna adjust live Z as it does that. And what you're looking for is the letter D, okay? Uh, that's the shape of the filament. If it gets squished and it's flat on top, that's too much squish for PETG. And if you don't get the squish and it's just kind of leaving a jelly roll uh, shape on top of the plate, that's too little squish. If you have a Prusa, this will look familiar. You peel, you peel the, uh, the first layer calibration off of the plate and at the end of it, there's this little flag. Well, this little flag is really important. If you look at the bottom of it, you'll see that we can still see evidence of the of the layer. Here's what the top looks like, okay? This is just about perfect because this is not over smushed, okay? You can still see the lines, yet they're sticking to each other. They're staying together, okay? That indicates a perfect Z height. So when you run the uh, layer, uh, first layer calibration, you'll find that uh, this is the hot setup. And if we put this single strand under magnification, you'll see the letter D in cross section. If we look down at the bottom of a benchy here, you notice that you can see there's evidence of the, um, the individual lines, there it is, in the bottom of the print. This is correct. If you try to get the bottom of a PETG print dead smooth, you're over squishing it. 
your your z uh, height is too low if it is a bunch of jelly rolls on the first layer that won't stick together it's too high so that's how you set the the uh, live z for petg this is important because you could start a print and if if it's uh over squished or under squished you'll come back to a mess another thing i do and this isn't specific to uh, petg is i run my uh, so-called zero cost wiper i take a clothes pin i take uh, one of the earplugs an ear earplug and i take a kim wipe which of course we have kim wipes and i do that and this guy rides smoothly uh, on the filament and it actually picks up uh, dirt. So let's take a look. This is, we're doing it live here. Let's see. There you go. You see this, the, the schmutz? Okay. So this is actually wiping dirt off the filament. This cost almost nothing. I have, I bought a box of the EAR earplugs. I have a lifetime supply of filament cleaners, but there's my filament cleaner. Highly recommended. It keeps it out of the nozzle. In order to make the filament cleaner work and really to improve things, you're going to need a, uh, a filament guide. This filament guide is super simple. I got it off of uh, Thingiverse so long ago, I couldn't tell you uh, where I got it. But check the uh, notes in the description of the video and also on my links page, and I will put information uh, about the model for this, and this could be one of your first projects to print uh, a filament guide. Finally, let's talk about nozzles. Uh, you'll note that I have uh, the date that I put a new nozzle in, and if I get a nozzle clog, which is very rare, but it happens, you get impurities uh, building up in and around the nozzle. If you get a nozzle clog, I'm in production. I'm getting things done. I replace the nozzle. So I keep um, spare nozzles right here, okay? Uh, I keep the original diameter of 0.4, uh, and then I have a little tool kit for changing out the, uh, the nozzle quickly, okay? So don't be afraid. It's going to cost you, you know, a few bucks, maybe six bucks. I, I'm not sure. For a nozzle, if you get a clog, change it. Now, the other thing that's extremely important when you do a nozzle change is that in the Prusa manual, it specifically says to change the nozzle at 285 C. What this does is, well, first of all, it gives you a chance to clean out any crap that's in there. But the other thing it lets you do is that you put the nozzle in, you hold the two wrenches appropriately, and you, you torque them with one grunt, okay, not a lot, and... When it cools down, it will shrink, and you'll never print above the temperature at which you, you torque the nozzle. That's really important. I screwed that up, and, and I had some issues, and finally when I realized, oh, you have to torque the nozzle um, at temperature, at 285 degrees, that's when everything got really stable, and I, w I stopped going through nozzles. You may find that when you start up a print, as the bed is warming up, that the nozzle will dribble a little bit. This is what it looks like. I'm trying to get you a good shot here. There we go. This is pretty normal. And if you can, you, you come over here with your uh, tweezers and you pull the little dribble off uh, before your print starts. But even, even if you fail to do that, it will generally wipe itself off uh, when it does its priming stripe here but that's something to watch for i do try to get that uh, removed from the nozzle before my print starts and then once my uh, machine starts moving i walk away and i'm all done so the other trick is to keep the nozzle clean so this is what i do for every print i take a standard kim wipe which you've already been introduced to i fold it four times the long way and i take a pair of tweezers and I grab the Kim wipe and I wrap it around the tweezers like so. I'm gonna preheat my nozzle. Okay, so the nozzle's warming up. So the reason we do this is so that we have 
um, a chem wipe. You're going to keep one end of the chem wipe in your hand, keep a little tension on it, and the other hand is going to stay on the uh, on the tweezers. So now we take our, our setup and we're going to go in and we're going to wipe around the nozzle and we're going to wipe the nozzle. And this is the stuff that's going to come off old residuals. And as you use up the chem wipe, you just keep unrolling it for a new chem wipe. And just try to get all the black stuff off. And if you do a good job at this, you're not going to have any of that black residue ending up in your prints. Anyway, once you know how to do this, it'll only take a minute. And you end up with a clean nozzle ready to go. Another accessory I made was this little simple print, which is a uh, SD card holder. So I made a few of these, and actually I used this print as an experiment in color change. So <laughs> I have a couple that look like this, but more importantly, I have them sitting right next to each printer. Now this is actually uh, attached to my work surface with a piece of VHB tape. <laughs> so it sits right here next to the printer, and this is where I keep my SD cards. And I have a little, a little process where the first slot is my production card, and any other cards are sort of uh, accessories or experiments. So like this is a scratch card that I keep around. But you'll notice that each of these, pr each of these printers, the uh, slot number one is empty, and that card is in the printer. So when I turn on the printer, I have my uh, standard set of products ready to go. So I can come down here and uh, pick them. Here, I'll show you how it works. I just go down to preheat, uh, I'm sorry, print from SD, PFG, SD card, revision six. I click it. There's all my products, my trays and my lids. And I just pick it and go. So that's what I call my production card. And the additional cards are for experimentation. So my goal here is simple, is to get you printing PETG reliably on the Prusa printer. I find that this filament is what I need for the work I do, which includes printing trays for my precision ground stones and lids and uh, fixtures and whatnot. I, I never change brand and I always use PETG. So I use a wiper, I have excellent nozzle uh, cleanliness, and I change them out. I don't, I don't try to uh, poke out clogs. If I get a clog, I change out the nozzle. I clean the bed appropriately with uh, Windex as a routine. I use Kim wipes only. I do the same thing every time. If I ever need a reset on the bed, I use acetone once. And I think those are all the special things that I do. Oh, and of course, I use the Prusament PETG profile for this filament, and I, I use it without modification. There you go. I hope this helps, and uh, I hope you enjoy your Prusa printer and running PETG on it, and you should have no problems.